Hi, and welcome to another of our weekly videos for Physics 102, Introduction to Electromagnetism here at McGill. My name is Matthew Heffernan, and this week I'll be going through a balanced Wheatstone bridge. So the first thing you're going to notice from the circuit here is that it's a classic Wheatstone bridge with a little bit of a twist. Rather than drawing it in that classic diamond shape of the Wheatstone bridge, uh, I've drawn it as a rectangle. And we have an extra resistor here. I'm going to simplify that and take care of it. I'm just going to practice some of those skills. So Wheatstone bridges are notoriously difficult to solve, but the trick here is we're going to be solving a balanced Wheatstone bridge. And what that means is that we want to solve for R6, which is our current unknown quantity, such that IBC, which is the current going through R4, is zero. So our question is, what is R6 so that R4, sorry, IBC is zero? Okay. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to notice that if IBC is zero, then the circuit element, R4, doesn't contribute. It doesn't affect our overall behavior. So what we can do is we can simplify that out by erasing it, which will make our circuit that little bit easier to tackle. OK, so that's step one. Step two is recognizing we can simplify this down a little bit further because we know that R2 and R3 uh, can be simplified to look more like the traditional Wheatstone bridge. Now we're not going to add in R5 because we're going to sort of make this look like the typical way you'd solve a balanced Wheatstone bridge problem. So we know that the way resistors add in series is by taking the sum, arithmetic sum, so R eq is R2 plus R3. We know that R2 is 10 kilo ohms. We know that R3 is 8 kilo ohms. So let's erase R2 here. Let's erase that as well. Make sure our circuit element is still connected. And let's call this R eq with the value of 18 kilo ohms. Okay, so now we're making progress simplifying this down a little bit. Now the next thing we're going to do is to implement Kirchhoff's laws. So the way we're going to do that is we're going to identify first the junction rules and then the loop rules. Now the first thing we're going to notice is that we have two junctions, junction A and junction D. But the same three things are involved, the same three currents are involved in junctions A and D. So only one of these is unique. The other one is just going to be the same equation multiplied by an overall sign. So we've also labeled some currents here. We've labeled IAD, we've labeled IDBA, and labeled IDCA going through there. We've already identified junctions A and D as our only two junctions. B and C used to be junctions, but they no longer are because there's no resistor there. We've taken that out. And now we have to identify some loops. So the first thing we're going to do is going to start writing some information down. All right, our junctions, we have A and D. And we have our loops. The first loop we have is A, B, D, C, A. So that's this loop internally, which involves all four resistors. So let's write that down. A, B, D, C, A. And we have another loop, which is A, C, D, A. So that's the external loop, the one that doesn't involve R1 and R6. So let's also write that down. A, C, D, A. OK? So we have two independent loops. We have two junctions only one of which is independent. And let's start off by writing down our junction equations. So our junction equations are IAD minus I 
D B A minus I D C A equals zero. And I D B A plus I D C A minus I A D equals zero. Okay, as I promised, these are going to be degenerate, which means that these are the same equation, one of which has been multiplied by an overall sign. Let's go ahead and write one of these down. It doesn't make sense to write both of them down. IAD minus IDBA minus IDCA equals zero. It's just the first one. And that's the junction rule we're going to use. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to write down the loop rules. So the first loop we're going to consider is ACDA. I'm just going to write that over here. ACDA. Okay. Our equation for ACDA is minus I. D C A R E Q plus R five plus fourteen volts equals zero. Okay. So that's I D C A times R E Q plus R five plus fourteen volts is zero. So that's the voltage drop around the outer loop is zero. The other loop rule we want to use is A B, D, C, A, and we have minus I, D, B, A, R1 plus R6 plus I, D, C, A, R5 plus R, E, Q equals zero. Okay, so that's that loop going that way. So the first thing we should do is we should solve this A, C, D, A loop equation. So we have it given here. What we're going to do is we're going to subtract 14 volts from both sides and multiply an overall sign. So what that's going to do is first let's subtract 14 volts from the left hand side. Let's subtract 14 volts from the right hand side. That's minus 14 volts. Let's multiply by an overall sign, just to make it consistent. And now, we know REQ, we know R5, we clearly know 14 volts, so we can solve for IDCA. So IDCA is equal to 14 volts over REQ plus R5. Well, REQ plus R5, we know REQ is 18 kilo ohms, we know R5 is 12 kilo ohms, so that's going to be 30 kilo ohms. And we know that 14 divided by 30,000 is just going to give us 0 0.000466 amps. Okay, let's write that down somewhere. Let's write I D C a is equal to 0 0.000466 amps. Now that's going to come in useful in a second. Okay. Now what we want to do is we want to focus on our second loop equation. So the problem with our second loop equation is that we have two unknown quantities in it. While we know IDCA, we just found it, we don't know R6, and we don't know IDBA. But the first thing we can do is we can solve for IDBA. So one thing we know is that no current flows from B to C. Remember, there used to be a connection there. So that says that the voltage at B, the potential at B, minus the potential at C is 0. So they're at the same potential which means the potential difference from A to B and the potential difference from A to C is the same. So that lets us write this equation. 
I, D, C, A, R, E, Q is equal to I, D, B, A, R, 1. Because if the, the voltage drop here and here has to be the same in order for no current to flow from B to C. Well, we know IDCA, we know REQ, and we know R1, so we can rearrange. So IDBA is equal to IDCA REQ over R1. And if we plug in the numbers we have for that, we find that IDBA is equal to 0 0.0021 amps. Let's write that up here as well. IDBA equals 0 0.0021 amps. OK, so far looking good. Well, now we've resolved our problem. So the problem was that we had one equation with two unknown quantities in it. But, using some logic and some things we know about how the circuit behaves, we've simplified that, we've found IDBA, and now we're all prepared to solve for R6. So, we also know from this loop here, that I dCA REQ plus R5, which we also see here, is equal to 14 volts. So let's just go ahead and write that as minus I D B A R1 plus R6 plus 14 volts is equal to zero. Okay, well, let's subtract 14 volts from both sides, which will mean we have basically the same thing we did before. So we have plus sign there. We have equals plus 14 volts. And so now, what we want to know is R6. So let's rearrange. We take, we divide both sides by IDBA, divided by IDBA. Dividing on this side will cancel out. We have R1 plus R6 is 14 volts over IDBA, which tells us that R6 is just equal to 14 volts over IDBA minus R1. So we, 14 volts is a given to us. IDBA is 0 0.0021 amps. R1 is 4 kilo ohms. So we put that all together, and we find that R6 is equal to 2.666 kilo ohms. And there we go. Given Kirchhoff's laws, we were able to rearrange, at times using things we already knew about this problem, we were able to find the resistance R6 that produces a balanced Wheatstone bridge.